Hello everybody, thank you for joining me today and in today's video we're going to be looking at high yield microcytic anemia for finals. So just a little bit about the medicine guide. So the medicine guide is a free online YouTube channel which offers free online videos to help support medical students throughout their entire journey at medical school. So I've made videos such as how to be successful at medical school how to approach anatomy, CBL, PBL teaching, as well as histology teaching. I've got a high yield imaging quiz for finals. I've got high yield topics as part of my OBS and Gynae edition. I've got high yield topics for paediatrics. I've got cardiology edition with a common high yield topics. I've got a high yield neurology edition, as well as a high yield ECG edition. And this video, in conjunction with others, forms part of my High Yield Hematology Edition. So if you enjoy my video today, please can I ask you to give me a thumbs up, like my video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and please post in the comment section below. So without further ado, let's get started. So the outline of today's video is that we're just going to be focusing on the High Yield Macrocytic Anemia Pathologies. If you want to find out a little bit about Microcytic Anemia, or normocytic anemia, then please do watch my other videos. So just to clarify, macrocytic anemia presents on a full blood count with a low haemoglobin value and a raised MCV value. Okay. So once we've looked at the full blood count and we've confirmed that we're looking at a case of macrocytic anemia, the next line in the SBA should help you identify whether or not megaloblasts were present in the blood smear sample. So if megaloblasts are present, then we're looking at a case of megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. If megaloblasts are not present, then we're looking at normoblastic macrocytic anemia. It's really important that you're able to differentiate between the two because there are only two pathologies that present with a megaloblastic macrocytic anemia. And these two pathologies are a vitamin B12 deficiency and a folate deficiency. The pathologies that present with a normoblastic macrocytic anemia includes alcohol abuse, liver disease, hypothyroidism, pregnancy, reticulocytosis, myelodysplasia, and also the use of cytotoxic drugs. Both vitamin B12 deficiency and folate deficiency are examples of macrocytic anemia with the presence of megaloblasts in the blood smear. I've underlined vitamin B12 and folate deficiency because these are the two most common high yield presentations of macrocytic anemia in SBA finals, and this video will purely focus on vitamin B12 and folate deficiency. Okay, so let's get started. So now let's focus on a vitamin B12 deficiency. So vitamin B12 is also known as cobalamin. So cobalamin and vitamin B12 are terms that are used interchangeably. So please be aware of this because one of the possible answer choices in the exam might be a cobalamin deficiency, which is exactly the same as the vitamin B12 deficiency. So just make sure that you're confident with that. So sources of vitamin B12 that are found in our everyday diet involves red meat, such as pork, beef, as well as dairy sources, such as in eggs and cheese and yogurts. So let's focus on the main risk factors that can lead to a vitamin B12 deficiency. And this involves pernicious anemia, where IgA antibodies are produced against intrinsic factor or the gastric parietal cells. Vitamin B12 deficiency can present following gastrectomy, ileal resection. It can arise in patients who have Crohn's disease, as well as patients who adhere to a very strict vegan diet because these patients will obviously exclude all sources of meat from their diet and exclude all forms of dairy. So this makes these patients very vulnerable to developing a vitamin B12 deficiency. Now, some of the common signs that are found in these patients includes pallor, shortness of breath, fatigue, glossitis, 
So this is a description of a very red beefy tongue, ataxia, hyporeflexia, and in very severe cases, the loss of vibration and proprioception, as well as numbness and paresthesia. In terms of tests, we need to perform a full blood count to confirm the presence of macrocytic anemia. Then we need to perform a peripheral blood smear, which confirms the presence of megaloblasts, as well as hypersegmented neutrophils. So like I mentioned previously, if you have a megaloblastic macrocytic anemia, the two possible choices are either a vitamin B12 deficiency or a folate deficiency. So if you have a look at the blood film, hopefully you can appreciate the example of a megaloblast in the bottom left hand corner. And in the far right hand corner at the top, you can see an example of a hypersegmented neutrophil. A hypersegmented neutrophil is when a neutrophil has more than five lobes present. Okay, now in terms of the management of a vitamin B12 deficiency, we need to replace that vitamin B12 deficiency with exogenous vitamin B12. So this takes the form of intramuscular hydroxycobalamin. So one gram of intramuscular hydroxycobalamin is given three times each week and then once every three months. Okay, so that's a nice short summary of vitamin B12 deficiency. So like I said previously, there are only two presentations of a macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. And this is either due to a vitamin B12 deficiency or due to a folate deficiency. Now folate may also be referred to as a vitamin B9 deficiency. So please just remember in your exams that vitamin B9 and folate are terms that can be used interchangeably. So sources of folate found in our everyday diet includes spinach, broccoli, and animal protein such as liver. Now the major risk factor placing patients at risk of developing a folate deficiency is found in pregnancy, as well as patients who are taking anti-folate medications such as trimethoprim, methotrexate, and phenytoin. The signs of a patient suffering from a folate deficiency includes glossitis, so a description of a red beefy tongue, but more commonly, these patients tend to be asymptomatic. Now, in terms of investigations, we need to confirm that the patient is suffering from a macrocytic anemia, so a full blood count will show the presence of low haemoglobin and raised MCV. We need to do a peripheral blood smear, so the presence of megaloblasts confirms that we're looking at a case of macrocytic megaloblastic anemia. The peripheral blood smear may also contain hypersegmented neutrophils. So if you have a look at this picture, hopefully you can appreciate the two key findings of megaloblasts and hypersegmented neutrophils. And similarly, hypersegmented neutrophils is a description where more than five lobes are present within a neutrophil. Now, in terms of management for folate deficiency, this is a little bit more complicated, and this is something that is exceptionally high yield. So firstly, in patients who are suffering from potentially a folate deficiency, as clinicians, we need to ask ourselves, is the patient deficient in vitamin B12 too? If the answer is yes, we need to treat the vitamin B12 deficiency first, and then when the vitamin B12 levels have returned back to normal, then we can begin to treat the folate deficiency. Otherwise, this can precipitate subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord. So just to clarify, we would offer the patient intramuscular hydroxycobalamin to alleviate the B12 deficiency, and then when the B12 levels have returned back to normal, then we would offer the patient five milligrams of folic acid to alleviate the folic acid 
sorry, that to alleviate their folate deficiency. Otherwise, this could lead to subacute combined degeneration of the spinal cord. So this syndrome is affecting the dorsal columns, the lateral corticospinal tract and the spinous cerebellar tract. The patient would present with bilateral spastic paresis, bilateral loss of proprioception and vibration and bilateral limitaxia. Now, if the patient has normal levels of vitamin B12, but they have low folate, we would just need to replace the folate, so offer five milligrams of folic acid. So this marks the end of my video today. If you've enjoyed my video, please can I kindly ask you to like my video, subscribe to my YouTube channel and share with your friends. Thank you very much for watching my video today and I wish you all the best of luck with your exams.